friends. Thank you for joining me today. And if you're new to the channel, then welcome to the family. Today, we will be doing a review of Decision Day Dish Boston of Married at First Sight and also really talking about Paige, who was one of the panelists and the three things that really stood out to me regarding Paige coming right up. Welcome to Fuel by Intentions, where we talk about faith, family, finances, fitness, and fun. Sponsored by Bynum's Business Solutions, where the right fit is made simple. We specialize in tips, tools, and strategies designed to help you achieve your financial health so that you can take control of how you spend your money so that you can spend more time with your family, friends, and doing the things you love. So let's jump right into the video. Well, tonight was Decision Day Dish and they had YouTuber Donna Rizzo as the host. I was so excited again to see Donna as the host. She looked really wonderful. Congratulations, Donna. I believe this is her second time being on Married at First Sight and I think she did a very good job in her hosting duties tonight. Congratulations to Donna Rizzo from Rizzo with Love. The Decision Day Dish featured alumni couples. We had Stephanie and AJ from Philadelphia, season eight, Keith and Christine from season eight, Philadelphia, Mika from Washington, DC, season 10, Gil from Houston, season 13, and Paige from Atlanta, season 12. They then ran through what everybody is kind of up to, AJ and Stephanie, they just moved to Florida. Keith and Christine, Keith has a different job being a technician, and Christina is just getting used to the new renovations in her home. Mika has moved from Washington, DC to North Carolina, Gil is still being a firefighter. He's cut off his beard. And then they got to Paige, where Paige said that she is finishing her book, Turning the Page, which I just love that topic. But this really did intrigue me. I'm really uh, excited about Paige. I'm really interested to hear her journey. Paige is what inspired me to really turn on the camera and begin filming. And that is why I do Married at First Sight. During season 12, the preseason of Married at First Sight before the couples met, Paige said that she believed that her marriage was manifested by God. One thing that I did love about Chris and Paige is even in their pre-interviews and everything, they just talked a lot about the Lord. And I think that there is so many Christians that are on reality television that don't really talk about him. But I feel that if you are in my presence for a long period of time, there is honestly no way where you won't know that I have a relationship with the Lord and that I take my faith seriously and that I am intentional about my faith. So when I heard Chris and Paige talking about their faith, it just re-energized me on a show that I already watch regularly. And then Paige said that this was manifested by God. And that is just such a statement to me. If you're interested to hear the backstory on that, I will leave an end card in the corner of the video and also put it in the description box because I turned on my camera and I said, I have to record my thoughts on this before it happens because many times we will say, oh, this was manifested by God. God told me this, God told me that. You know, I got a sign, I got a vision. And then when it all goes downhill, we backtrack on either what we heard or we didn't know if it was God or, you know, he, he changed his mind or whatever. And I just never believe that God changes his mind. So I wanted to take a video and see what how the story played out because it never plays out how you think it is in your mind. And we see what happened to Chris and Paige. So I have really, I do have a, an, a, an endearment for, for Paige and her story. And I would love to follow her journeys. I was really happy to hear that she was writing a book and she was turning her pain into something that we can really learn and grow from. I'm hoping that's what her book is about, how we can learn and grow. I then looked online and I saw an article. I might be on the late freight, but I just now saw it. I saw an article that she she did in Essence Magazine, and it was actually last year sometime, but they did an article on her writing her book. It mentioned that she's doing a women's conference and it's called Journey to Self. It appears that she did one back in January in Atlanta, and then she'll be doing another one in June. And it's a collaboration between Brianna and Haley, 
both from her season. And they're doing it on mental health. So they're talking about mental health issues. And in January, they had a psychiatrist come and then they did a panel discussion. I couldn't tell for sure if the January event happened or if they pushed that event to June. So if you're in Atlanta, look it up. And I will leave a link in the description box for anybody who is wanting to seek that out. I'm a big advocate of mental health. My sister passed away in June who struggled most of her life with mental health real mental health, not self-care health, mental health where you really do need assistance. And so that is a real big passion of mine. Me and my family, we have been able to help my sister go through it. And I can just tell you that God is alive and God is well. Because to see my sister struggle with mental health issues, she ended up being a double amputee and even in the midst of that, she still had joy. I thought that was amazing, amazing, amazing. If you wanna hear about that journey, I've made a video about that as well. I will link the card above and also put it in the description box. The third thing that really encouraged me about Paige is in the article, it said that in her book, she's gonna be sharing some of her journal entries that she wrote during the taping of the show. And I think that journaling. I am a big journaler. I'm a big advocate of journaling. And I think that that is a great way for all of us to take care of our mental health and also a great way for us to record and reflect on what God has for each of us. It's a way to see our spiritual journeys just playing out within our own lives. We all have a life story. We all have a book to write. So I would encourage you to think about your own life and what you can share and how you can help. Ironically, today I saw clips of a Dr. Phil show and he was talking about the 1075 rule. And I guess it's a book that he wrote but he said that there are 10 defining moments that we have in our lives. There are seven critical decisions that we make and there is five influential people that we encounter. So I would say just start there. Look in your own life and see what are my 10 defining moments in my life? What are the five critical decisions that I've had to make? And who are the five influential people that have influenced my life to make me the person that I am today? And I think that that is a great starting point for us to define who we are and our purpose and where we're going and our passion. I haven't done it yet. It just was today when I saw it, but I plan to because I think that that is a great start for us to just finding out our purpose in God. The passage of scripture that I think that we can reflect upon is Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This is the hope that we must have when we're going through difficult times. That's the message I think that we can get from Paige because when I see her and I just think of how she has overcome going through public scrutiny from her season and now writing a book in order to help others and also putting on a conference that would help others with mental health, I think that that is awesome. And God does know the plans that he has for each of us and he does want us to prosper. So I encourage you to look into your own life and see what is God telling you? Is there a situation that you encountered? It doesn't have to be a bad situation. It can be something of great joy, but how does God want you to use that to impact the lives of others? So that is my wrap up of Paige. Paige, congratulations to you. We wish you well in your future endeavors. Now, we will get back to decision day dish. Donna asked the panel what was their most unforgettable moment from the season. And the overwhelming thought was Alyssa and how she tried to make Chris look like the bad guy. Donna asked the panel if they thought that Chris made the right decision. And I was really interested in Paige's answer, who said that she did, she felt like he made the right decision and it's probably something that she should have done on her season. They then reviewed each of the couples and talked about the positives and the negatives in each of their relationships. They started off talking about Noi and Steve and they talked about how they have natural chemistry with one another. They then talked about their financial situation. And one thing that stood out to me was Stephanie and how she said she did not believe it was really about finances, but it was about trust and how Noi did not really trust Steve 
in order to believe that he would be able to provide for her. And she related it to her own situation because AJ is an entrepreneur. And she said there are months when things are up and down, but you have to have faith in that person that that person can deliver. Mika also made a good point that that's very hard because of the background that Noe comes from. And also Christina made a really good point discussing if Noe wants to live apart and she is worried about finances, why would she want to live apart? And that would stress out their financial situation even more if they're caring for two homes. If you're having issues about finances, then you don't want to create more financial obligations where more issues can arise. They talked a little bit about the chore situation, but it appeared like the panel agreed that that is definitely something that they can overcome. They then made their own decision day predictions. Everybody said that both Noi and Steve would say yes, except Mika and Keith. Mika and Keith believe that Noi will say no. The panel discussion then continued with Michael and Jasmina. Paige indicated that slow and steady sometimes win the race. And it does, I do agree. And I think that if they had a little more time, that this may absolutely apply to Michael and Jasmina. A lot of people were frustrated because they didn't see the chemistry and the interaction. Keith indicated that he likes them as individuals, but they've had too many issues and that he sees Michael as not wanting to let things go. And Jasmina just wants to talk about it and then drop it. And Mika chimed in and indicated, I see that as the reverse, which I do too. I think Jasmina is the one that's holding on and I think Jasmina is holding on to their issues, which is why it is hard for them to move forward. And I don't really know the reason because I feel like, you know, you give somebody a chance, they do better and you move on. Maybe there's something in her past that makes it hard for her to let go and move on. Because I think that the issues that they've had during the beginning of their relationship is what's holding Jasmina back now. They also talked about how Michael is in his head and that they're clearly are in the friend zone. And one thing that solidified it for Stephanie is when Jasmina called her mom and told her that there was no chemistry. Gil weighed in on this couple and he indicated that he thought that Jasmina was the one who was stopping the intimacy and that if Michael would make a move, then Jasmina would stop him. But then he said that he thinks that Michael should make a move and that he should just take a shot and it either works or it doesn't. But I thought that was a strange comment coming from Gil when his next words were, he took a long time with Merla because she was uncomfortable. So he didn't take his shot, but she was giving him affection in other ways. And I think that Jasmina is giving affection in other ways. They hold hands and different things like that, kind of sit close or whatever, do, you know, I don't know. I just think that there has been some interaction with them. They do sleep in the same bed, not saying that they sleep cuddled together, but that's an intimacy in itself. And I just don't think that Gil has any room to tell somebody else to take the shot when he didn't. And he said the reason why he didn't was because Marilyn was uncomfortable. Jasmina has told Michael that she's uncomfortable too. Why would you tell Michael to disrespect Jasmina when you didn't do that in your own relationship? I disagree with Gil on that one. They then discussed their decision day predictions for this couple. Gil and Keith said both would say yes. Rizzo, Stephanie, and Paige said that both would say no. Christina and AJ said that Michael will say yes and Jasmina will say no. That was it for Jasmina and Michael. In their discussion of Lindsay and Mark, they do agree that Lindsay is a lot, but that she is transparent and she has a caring heart. For Mark, they feel like he has lost his voice and that he is really scared to say different things that he believes or thinks because of Lindsay's reaction. I love that AJ was able to relate to Lindsay and said he too was high energy and that that is something that Stephanie had to get used to. Christine did not like that Mark wants some time away and they agree that you don't have to have time away to determine if you miss the person. I can relate because there are times when I do miss my husband. If he goes somewhere after work instead of coming straight home, I'll miss him. Or if he goes to hang out with someone and I'm just kind of like at home, I'll miss him. So there are times to miss people who you are with a lot. However, I don't know Mark and Lindsay's situation right now because he doesn't have a job and she may be working at home. So maybe they don't have those times where they are really just away from each other. 
And then I like, I think that he works out. We know that he will go do different things with Steve. I still think there is opportunities for him to miss her. So I agree. You don't have to be away from your spouse for long periods of time to determine if you miss them. They then did their decision day predictions on this couple. Keith, Christina, and Mika said both will say yes on decision day. AJ, Stephanie, Gail, Paige, and Donna all said they will say no on decision day. We then move to our last couple, which is Katina and Elijah Wan. AJ indicated that he thinks that Elijah Wan is shady and that he's a bad husband. I don't know, and I know a lot of people have that feeling about Elijah Wan, but I don't feel like he is shady and I don't really feel like he is a bad husband. I think that he is unfiltered and he needs to learn how to control what he says, but I think that a lot of us are like that. I see these couples on television and I believe that we judge them harshly, but I think that if we look in our own circle, that we will find people in our lives who are just like them. Keith indicated that he likes them both. He says that Elijah Wan is a hard worker. He is a drill sergeant in the gym. He has purchased his own home. He has admitted that he has had issues in the past and Katina is a sweetheart and she is hardworking as a retire retirement analyst as well. Christina says she liked them until after the honeymoon and she really wants to know where that came from, where he kind of belittled her domestic ability. So I think that she's kind of giving Elijah Wan the side eye, like most of us are kind of giving Elijah Wan the side eye about how he approaches and says some things. But I think that Keith can identify with Elijah Wan because him and Christine, they had issues in their marriage about chores and cooking and who should take on which role. And it was so cute because Keith said that he just was like, I can't speak on this or let me go to the, let me go out of the room for this part. Those different things that will be hard in his marriage to deal with, or maybe that he doesn't want to revisit. I would really like to know how did they come out of that? And Keith says that he reaches out to all of the Married at First Sight cast. So I hope he reaches out to Elijah Wan because if he's gone through something similar and and now they have a way that they have resolved that. Maybe he can pour that into Elijah Wan and just get them further faster without him having to go through the same struggle. I love the point that Mika made because she said that Katina is emotionally and mentally more mature than Elijah Wan. I'm sure we can all agree with that. But sometimes we don't even think about that because we think maturity is he has a house, he graduated from college, you know, he paid off his student loans, those tangible things. But your mental and emotional health, that's important too. I do agree with Mika that Katina is emotionally and mentally more mature than Elijah Wan. Mika mentioned that Katina is a people pleaser and Gil indicated that he thinks that she doesn't say anything because she really wants his marriage to work and she doesn't want to ruin things. But I love what Paige says. It's not that she's a people pleaser. She just doesn't like conflict. And there are some of us who we just don't like conflict. So we're very careful about our words because we see that Katina can handle conflict, but I don't think that she wants to live in conflict. And I think that she's trying to be very respectful of her husband and not demean him on national TV. And honestly, I think that you can get to know your husband in that manner pretty quickly. And I think she she knows that she can take it and he may not be able to because there are a lot of people who can dish it out but they will be broken they cannot take it and maybe she's just discovered that from Elijah Wan or about his personality and she's just treading lightly when they're on camera I think Katina is talking when the cameras are down they discussed briefly the having kids issue but most of them believe that that is something that they can overcome and also when you give a timeline for kids you know that's just an estimate of what you would like to happen and if it doesn't happen, then you can adjust. They discussed last week's episode briefly and discussed how Elijah Wan told Katina that she needed to make a selfish decision. Most agree with that statement, but says it's kind of like how he said it, what we've been saying all along not what he said, but they did have a problem with him saying that if it didn't work out, he wouldn't be heartbroken. They thought that that was an inappropriate statement for him to make to Katina, and we agreed. They then went to their decision day predictions.
predictions. And everyone except Christina and Stephanie believe this couple will say yes on decision day. Christina and Stephanie, they believe that this couple both will say no on decision day. And Stephanie even said, if they said yes on decision day, then they would be divorced by the time the reunion comes. After the couple's review, they talked about their own decision day and how they thought about it and what they felt about it. Gil indicated that he questioned his decision when they were at the cabin and Mirla was complaining about the cabin. He's just thinking, do I really want to put up with this? I don't think that's a fair assessment of the situation because in the clip that they showed, it showed him asking Mirla, what do you think about the cabin? Because a lot of times I think he makes it sound like she just goes around complaining but many times she's complained because you have asked her a direct question about her thoughts or feelings is she supposed to say it's fine it's okay you ask her, her opinion she told you her opinion i think the way it would have been better if everybody had their own cabin cabin now if she just goes around complaining i can see that but a lot of times he's asking her stuff and she's answering it and then he is lodging it in the complaint column and i don't think that's fair Paige said she wished decision day would not have happened and she should not have went to decision day since their decision had already been made i guess she could have stayed away mika said her decision day was hard because it's just hard to deliver bad news to anyone and she felt like she had failed at her marriage next up is the actual decision day what do you guys think about these couples? Do you agree with the panel predictions? What do you think about Paige? Are you curious to follow her along her journey? If you have missed any of the action, then see the Merit at First Sight playlist. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, live with intention. Be intentional.